Okay, good evening. We will uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Jason Caldwell, one of the principal. I have with me Jerome Price, our assistant principal, um, and inheritor of the Washington, D.C. trip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was afraid he knew what he signed up for. Um, he wouldn't follow through. So I'm like, I'll do the presentation tonight, and then you'll find out what you really signed up for. And it's uh, good to back out. So uh, we have Larry Wolf from uh, Prime Tours. Uh, and uh, that's the tour company that we use to run this trip. Uh, have been great partners with us over the years. And so uh, there'll be some questions that he's able to answer and speak to. Uh, but uh, got to know him last year on our trip, retired social studies teacher from Hilliard and Hartley and Academy. So um, we'll still take him. Uh, so uh, very, very glad to have him. To have his expertise on the trip. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to uh, do the recording this so that those families who couldn't make it, they have an audio recording. Uh, I don't know why they want to listen to this, but they can. And then we'll provide all this information that's in the slides. Uh, we'll get an email uh, either tomorrow or Friday. Uh, it just kind of depends on how my day goes tomorrow and when you get that email. So our trip for next year is slated for April 16th through 19th. That's a Tuesday through Friday. Um, I want to give you guys just a real quick so video some kids made a couple years ago that I think uh, gives you kind of a quick overview. So we will watch that for a moment. So you have all of the things that our founding fathers would have been so proud of. Um, we had a golden crowd, we had subway, we had sitting in traffic, we had uh, honor devices, um, uh, you know, all the things that really make the trip key. So uh, yeah, but I, I think that's a nice little overview, and it really goes that fast. The four days are incredibly quick. Uh, and so we'll talk, no, one, two, uh, so we will talk through, um, uh, I forgot to use that date, 
Uh, we'll talk, talk through kind of each of the days and kind of typically what happens. Uh, there's a couple of things that we have to schedule very specifically in the trip. Uh, most notably, the Holocaust Museum and African American History Museum. Those are two of the most difficult things to get tickets for. So we have to wait until we have those things in place and then kind of build our actual days around it. But we do the same back savings pretty much every year. Uh, I'll kind of just give you a sample of that. Uh, there's a handbook. What I put out tonight is just the forms. Um, I've tried every which way. Um, I made the forms in the handbook. And then I put stars on the forms. Now I'm like, not even giving you the handbook, I'm just giving you the forms. Uh, to, because that's the most important thing you need to get back. Um, I tell the kids all the time, like, the, I cannot take you out of the state legally without your parents' permission. I know they said they want you to leave the house and maybe never come back. But, like, I need that right. So, uh, we, so that's the most important thing is I need those permissions to take back in time and fashion. We can put it in November 1st deadline on that to give you uh, a little bit of time. But you'll have, you'll have the link to the full handbook. Uh, we'll be going over that with students. Uh, and then we do have kind of three uh, areas of eligibility that we're going to go through students with as far as uh, expectations to go on the trip. The, the trip is part of the curriculum. It's tied to eighth grade standards and things that we teach there. Uh, but it, it is also kind of like something extra. So if I can't trust you, three minutes from your parents, like I'm gonna have a hard time trusting you eight hours from your parents uh, when we are vastly out of them. So we talk a lot about that, about the eligibility, about the expectations, and it generally kind of falls in these three areas uh, as far as what we need from students. And so we will go through that uh, in detail with them, and it's also in the handbook. Uh, so there are, like I said, it's tied to our eighth grade curriculum, that's the reason that we do it um, in eighth grade, because uh, we're learning about American history, early American history, and so a lot of the sites that we're seeing, a lot of things we're talking about are tied to that. And so it's really nice to uh, do a tour in Gettysburg, and our, our field guides are asking me questions, and the kids are like, oh, we learned about that. Um, like, it's a surprise to them that something that they learned would actually be useful. Um, we like to have a little bit of surprise uh, whenever possible. Uh, and so then uh, we we also want to students to be reflective. So the trip is fun, but there's also things built into it. So we're asking them, you know, what did early Americans value? What do Americans value? Have they value? How do we show that? Um, you know, why why was this monument built? Why was this person honored and not this person? Um, I think that's something that we become more aware of and better at over the last uh, couple of years as far as trying to say that there's more than one perspective on these things and uh, getting kids to through those perspectives. Again, you know, we're giving information, we just want you to think about it and decide, uh, you know, things, what traditions are we holding on to and when this change. Those are things that we ask kids to be reflective and have that experience to draw on, to, to make those decisions for themselves. Uh, vendors, uh, like I said, we work with Prime Tours, we've worked with them for a number of years and they coordinate our buses, our hotels, uh, really all the logistics. Uh, which is tremendous. So we tell them, hey, this is what we want out of the trip. They say, here's how you do that. And then they'll suggest things. And we'll say, well, what about this? And that's a great idea. Or that's a terrible idea. This is like, don't want to do that. Uh, but we're very fortunate to work with them. Uh, and then, <clears throat> I didn't care how this, but traditionally we use like cardinal transportation or other reputable bus companies. It's also nice to uh, hopefully we're getting past the siblings of kids of the infamous bus trip. Um, I think they may be really close to being clear of that. Um, but uh, so get, get clear of that. Uh, another nice thing about working with a insurance or with a uh, travel company is that they can link families with insurance. Uh, so we've got a hot point and this was uh, you know the year of the pandemic we had to cancel our whole trip and you know everybody's like thanks for your money. So uh, we uh, so that that's something that's available. I've got to verify that these rates are still the current rates they were last year. But you will have information about that also yeah. in the email, so that if you want uh, additional travel insurance uh, for your student for your trip, uh, that is available. Uh, so some deadlines uh, and uh, as love as much as I love my job as part time bill collector, uh, like I really need your help and your communication on this. If there's a deadline you can't make, if there's, if there's assistance or support you need, 
like just communicate that to us. Um, we're, we're glad to work with you. We're fortunate to have the resources. Our PTO is tremendous in helping uh, make sure that every student can attend the trip, regardless of uh, any kind of financial need. Uh, and so we are asking for a $200 deposit um, for it by November 1st. I know that's coming up quick. Um, and then we try to, uh, and we have another one in December. If this payment plan does not work for you and your family, just communicate with us. Okay? If you have a need, uh, just communicate with us. That all gets ready through myself and Mr. Price. You don't have to qualify for any certain kind of financial assistance. It's all handled by us. Uh, we do all of that internally. And like, so we have those resources through PTO to help make that available. So just, again, just communicate with us. Uh, like, if, you're, if you say your kid's not going, I guess you're probably not sitting in this room. Uh, then, but like you say, if you say it's not going on the trip, the very first thing I'm going to say is like, is this a financial thing? Is this something we can help with? Because that should never be the barrier uh, for, for kids in this district. Um, the uh, PTO is a tremendous, this is my reminder to shout them out if I haven't done so already. Um, and so they do collect, they do fundraising, and then every year they make a donation to help support overall trip, the overall cost of the trip down, and also um, for those scholarships. They they never know who the scholarship is for. I just give them a figure and say, this is our need, and they've always uh, been able to make that happen. Um, so PTO is fantastic. Um, okay, happy. So one suitcase. Um, I love, you know, there's probably a kid or two a year that are like, so when will the ballet be coming? Uh, I'll just, just leave here. Like, they're on the picture. Uh, so, one suitcase and one carry on. Uh, you can bring as many suitcases you want, but you're carrying it. Um, we don't utilize elevators uh, because if you have, unless you have like a physical need, because if you have you know, 200 kids trying to use elevators, you can imagine what that's like. So, we're carrying bags up and down three, four flights of stairs. Uh, so, uh, Calculate that in your in your packing. Um, things like personal hygiene, we have a packing list. That's part of what I'll send out to you that breaks all of these things down. Uh, and it's you know what this is. I don't know, I think this two years. This is like the twelfth year I've done this here. Uh, I've done it the previous school, so like we kind of know what what you need by now. Uh, but you know, obviously personal hygiene and night clothes. Rainwear uh, and walking shoes. Uh, so it is a ton of walking. Uh, from the time that we leave on Tuesday morning till the time that we get back on Friday night, we typically walk in the 25 to 30 mile um, range, which uh, we consider we basically spend two of those days on buses. Uh, that's a lot of walking. Uh, we get use the buses to get where we're going. And then we kind of walk between museums and sites and try to use them as little as possible in the city because it's a nightmare. Uh, so comfortable walking shoes and lots and lots of socks. Dry socks are your best friend on this. Here we go. Um, three days of clothes um, uh, to make sure. I, I'm not kind of clothes you wearing when you get on the bus. Uh, and we do, you know, ask that. You know, we're dressing reasonably. We are touring government offices and museums and things like that. So uh, we do ask the students to be mindful of that. We do not have a specific dress code because I made a dress, you know, a very specific dress code for this trip, and I have to figure out how to enforce it and what the words say. And as I couldn't figure out for high school what high heels were called the other day, uh, I'm not the person to be doing that. Uh, we do have one uh, night when we do a dinner cruise. Uh, and that does require a little bit of a nicer outfit, a collar shirt for guys, um, either like um, a dressier jeans or dress pants, um, and then um, I can't remember the language for ladies, but something nice. <laughs> what if the equivalent of a polo shirt and khakis is for girls? That's what it is. It's in the, I, I had a former teacher write the description, it's in the handbook. Uh, I just can't remember what it says. Uh, but that's something that's usually something that the girls do like to get dressed up for. Um, it's like, a, it's a dance thing. It's, it's, um, there's way more effort from one gender to the other. 
in preparing for that. But the guys make up for it in Columbia. So, sunglasses, sunscreen. Uh, we do usually have um, pretty pretty good weather by this time of the year, uh, and then a book bag or purse. We, there are things we ask kids to carry with them um, as far as like you know, meal tickets for that day, um, cell phones, um, ponchos, those kind of things. We do ask kids to carry a smaller thing with them. Um, water bottle, kids drink enough water. We're, we're constantly on the kids about who's drinking water to make sure they're hydrated with all the walking we're doing. Uh, cameras, phones, chargers, headphones, um, something with a clock. Um, the same kid who needs to look at their cell phone every single period of class uh, because they're looking at the clock. Now all of a sudden, can't remember to look at the clock when we need to be somewhere. Uh, I can't figure out where that, the, how that dynamic works. Um, and then, um, yeah, like, I don't know why I went back to book a magazine. I can't remember the last time you picked red on, on this trip. <laughs> uh, but it's a nice spot. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, so the most important thing, the thing that we like will absolutely like draw a hard line on is the buddy system. And uh, like we don't even care like who your buddy is, but you've got to be with somebody from Lexington at all times. We didn't used to have that EMS on there. And a the kid's like, I'm like, hey, how come you're not with your buddy? And they're like, oh, this is John that I just met. He's my buddy. And I'm like, no. John's a creeper. That's how it is. Uh, so, um, yeah, so everywhere they go, like, you don't have to go in the bathroom stall together, but you gotta go to the bathroom together. So, uh, we really hammer that. And if a kid loses their buddy, then they become uh, one of our buddies, which, what is better? I was thinking to reward for them at that point, because who doesn't want to hang out with chaperones? <laughs> Um, so here's kind of the way this the week runs. So Monday of that week is a normal school day. Uh, we do activities preparing for the trip um, and just kind of final lunch. Uh, Tuesday, we've got to be here by 6.15. Uh, we have students that either go to the cafeteria or to the, um, which, you know, because that's so early, the parents are like, can it be 6? Can it be 545? Uh, so, kids go to one of the two places. We have set stations set up in the gym or cafeteria for us for chaperones to do bag checks. And then we, um, we have uh, students load their very heavy bags onto the buses. Um, you know, having done bag checks for years. Um, some students have bags that are filled um, with before mentioned high heels and dresses. And, all these kind of things, um, and somehow um, one pair of underwear um, and food, like just endless bags of food, uh, which is, I mean, it's your space, so use it how you want. Um, when I ask about why one pair of underwear, they're like, well, that's, there's four sides, you know, inside, outside, front, and back, so that's all you need, right? Yeah. All right. It's like somebody's mom. You ever do a laundry, like, it just doesn't seem like I'm doing enough laundry. Or you're doing laundry like, man, who's wearing eight outfits a day? Like, there's another two. All right, give a pass. Give multiples. Like, yeah, you're always doing laundry, I'm sure. Um, so, so I thought the best thing ever was to have a laundry on my second floor. I thought, oh, that'd be great, so much less. But it just means my wife is constantly like, nudging me, like, can you go change the laundry in the middle of the night? Uh, didn't think that. All right, uh, bus ride. So, one thing to do is when the kids pick a seat and then match your seat for the bus ride, that helps with attendance and, and head counts and, and making sure everybody um, is where they're supposed to be, that they get busy the bus rides. Uh, we have to load and unload quickly. Uh, there's lots of places where the bus driver's like, look, I'm not supposed to pull, I'm not supposed to park here. You guys can get out quickly. It'll save you from walking three blocks. So we try to be uh, helpful with that. Um, certainly important to be courteous to our drivers and adults. We never had a problem with that. Uh, we spend time every evening cleaning the bus, uh, making sure everything gets picked up. Uh, no speakers or things like that. Uh, there's a reason there's headphones and you can use them. And then uh, we do have you know, temperatures for the day driving, whether it's raining or sunny out or whatever. So we encourage you to be addressing layers or bring a jacket, blanket, something like that. Um, Tuesday, uh, still going. So our first stop, we stopped uh, for restroom break about 9.30, so we've been on the road for about two hours at this point. 
And then our next stop is the Flight 93 Memorial in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is where uh, one of the planes on Line 11 was headed for uh, Capitol Italy and uh, was brought down by uh, passengers on the plane. So there's a nice uh, memorial of remembrance there, some artifacts that kind of tell the story. Uh, really, really a cool thing uh, that we get to get out and see. So that's kind of our first stop. And then we grab uh, box, usually this was box lunches from Subway. We'll have the kids in advance, she'll order a, uh, a whatever one of your box lunch, like two or three choices. Is can you imagine going through a subway line and like, um, olives, no, 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 I don't want olives. Um, you know, so it's all pre ordered. We pick it up, it's there, we're ready to roll. Um, and that, that works out pretty well. And the box lunches come with water bottles, cookies, chips, um, I guess whatever. Um, talking about food generically, yeah, kind of generically throughout this, um, but we definitely will work with any kind of allergies or, or um, food need. Um, can't really come any pickiness, but the rest of that we will do our best to work with. Uh, Tuesday, uh, we're then head uh, to Gettysburg. Uh, we get off and we do a uh, kind of two-hour uh, tour. It's on and off the buses, so the battlefield guys get on with us. Uh, we drive, get off, see some things, look some things. Uh, sometimes we'll have us line up and march. Um, always impressed with our kids' knowledge, uh, the trivia, and the questions that they'll ask them about Gettysburg, our kids are always like spot on. Um, and then the guys are super complimentary of our students, uh, both in their knowledge and their behavior, which is always a great way to start the trip. Um, so that, that takes about two hours, and then afterwards we um, will stop at a buffet for dinner, um, and our food is pretty much Subway buffet or food court, um, because that's the only real way to eat the Swedish people. Um, with any kind of efficiency. So you'll still hear that theme multiple times. Um, and then we check in the hotel about 9.30. Uh, students went on buses, chaperones, we go grab the keys for the rooms, uh, and then we come back out and we call the kids off the bus one room at a time. They grab their bag, they take it in, uh, and we try to be super respectful and mindful of the other guests there that night. When uh, we go into the hotels uh, any given night. Uh, we have a nurse's station, so there'll be a room for any student who needs medication. Um, but they stop by and, and take care of that, um, and then they go to the room. We don't use vending machines, we don't use ice machines, um, and we don't prank call each other from the phone. I don't even know if it's not how to use the hotel front, so that might be the, the Delta security feature there. Um, but uh, again, like 200 kids getting a bucket of ice, like, that's just a never ending thing. Um, so, we, we just don't start that. If someone needs ice for a legitimate reason, they're chaperone uh, or nurse the system in that. Um, all throughout everything we're talking about, we realize we're in different spaces. It's have different experiences to travel, uh, those kind of things. So, we're always talking about like the etiquette, the expectation. I think that's part of this trip is how do you go out into these kinds of places? and conduct yourself. How do you tour? How do you feel like it's, that's part of the learning and teaching we're doing? Um, so we will, we're not expecting kids to walk in the door like knowing these things. It's nice when they do, but if not, we will be uh, telling them and, and telling them again. Um, and so you know, we talk about, okay, this is a memorial. This is what's expected here. Versus this is a museum. This is what's expected here. Uh, and then you know, we always uh, basically the same expectation of every day in the cafeteria. You clean them up after yourself. We point them to science that talks about, you know, this is okay to sit, you know, with your feet in the water because it's a World War II memorial versus uh, not, you can't you know, walk through it. Um, you, know, you can chew gum lots of places, you can't chew gum at the changing of the guards. So we're just constantly talking to them about that and helping them understand the expectations. Um, Cruise, uh, the expectation is. There's usually like one or two other schools on the cruise ship, and we have our floor, and they have other floors, and so we, other schools stay out of our space, and we stay out of their space. There's a deck on top, as long as it's not raining, kids can go up and, uh, and mingle, um, which, you know, for some of our kids, they've annoyed all their classmates, they have no chance of that romantic night on, 
um, dinner groups. And so their hope is to get to another school that they can, they can have a chance with. Uh, so hotel, don't disrupt other guests. We were supposed to be uh, in apartments. And like I said, we're, we're always talking about this. This is kind of an example of uh, the conversations we're having every time we get on off the bus. This is part we talk about PBIS, positive behavior intervention supports. It's, it's about setting expectations, not just assuming everybody knows, oh, this is how you conduct yourself. Uh, you know, I, I, I go into spaces and uh, uh, I'm like, okay, well, how am I supposed to act? You know, um, I'm not Jewish, I go to a synagogue, I go to Bar Mitzvah, I go to I go to some kind of ceremony, uh, and I'm like looking around at everybody. It's okay, what do I do? I stand, I sit, I kneel, um, yeah, no, I'm not a so, same thing, like, it's really nice because somebody tells you, oh, this is how you conduct yourself. So we, we do that for the kids. Um, that's kind of our, our weather, typically, this time of year. Uh, kind of, it's a little cooler at night, and then uh, the weather can be super awesome. Um, it has been for a number of years, that time of year. So uh, it's really nice when we go, there's a couple reasons we go in April. Um, May is the big travel season for schools, so uh, lots and lots of schools are there. Um, so we get a little bit less crowded typically in April, uh, and but it's still kind of a sweet spot with weather. So we like to uh, do that. Now I've talked so much about the weather because the people are home, sorry. Um, so Wednesday, uh, breakfast, there's a common kind of breakfast. There's usually like a waffle bar and um, Cereals, fruit, and those kind of things. Uh, so kids can come down at that time <coughs> in the in the breakfast area set up for us, and then they can uh, go back to the room if they have time, wait, or then we head out to the bus at seven thirty. Um, we're really on. I mean, we can't have one kid holding up four buses worth of people, so we're really on the kids about here where you're supposed to be and uh, making sure they're getting there. Uh, uh, Arlington National Cemetery is always nice earlier in the day when it's a little bit cooler because there's quite a bit of walking up and down hills. We usually try to see a change in the guards uh, and then depending uh, on kind of if, if there's a, a local interest or a, a local, uh, you know, if there's something in the news, talk that we might want to hit, a lot of times we'll, uh, we'll go and see where the challenger um, and the Iran Contra and all those uh, kind of memorial or the Iran uh, hostage rescue where all those things are. Um, we try to make it significant for kids. Um, this, uh, this, this gravestone is uh, uh, one of the few Bexley graduates uh, who is buried in Arlington Cemetery. Uh, it is like, it is a hike and it is in the middle of like this. It's as far back as you see there, and there's that many coming in this direction. So we don't take the kids out to see it because it's just, you couldn't take 200 people out there to see it. But we do try to make some local connections whenever possible. Um, the best place that we can eat um, is at the Department of Agricultural Food Court. It's amazing. Uh, there were renovations last year. We couldn't get in. All the chaperones are super bummed. Um, but uh, that's, that's a tremendous uh, food court. Uh, when we go, all the meals, there's either three or handing the kids a voucher, or um, if we can't do a voucher, we're handing them cash. Once the trip is paid for, like, that is everything. Uh, that is all the meals, that is snacks, that is uh, interest to anything. A, a kid does not need a single dime uh, on the trip. But uh, if they, if you know, kids want some souvenirs. Uh, we recommend no more than about fifty dollars. Uh, I've had more than once where we're pulling out and kids go, "Oh, I, I left my wallet in the hotel." Um, you know, we're heading back to Columbus, and I'm like, well, "Was there any money in it?" And I'm like, yeah, four hundred dollars. And I'm like, "Sorry, I'm not turning. Can you keep turning the buses around?" Um, and I have yet to have. For us to call and say, like, oh yeah, someone turn that in and we're going to send it back to you. It hasn't happened yet. So uh, I, I just really emphasize that we don't carry a bunch of cash on there. Uh, expensive jewelry or something. I don't know if kids are bringing those expensive, you know, whatever phone. But um, 
Um, so at Wednesday, uh, so in this, this version of the trip, we did the Holocaust Museum. Holocaust Museum is, is tremendous, it's moving. Uh, we try to both make sure kids have a meaningful experience, but also try to be understanding that um, it's a lot, it's heavy. So we talk to kids about that. We, uh, the nice thing about the way the museum is set up is um, some of the most like graphic things um, that you would see, um, you have to look over a wall or you have to kind of go around a corner. So you can go through and experience it um, without the most graphic elements. Um, but hey, we talk to kids about what that means um, and, and how they can uh, successfully navigate that. We, we travel with them as chaperones. Um, we, it's not just to pick kids, go, go do it. Um, you start at the top floor and you work your way back down. Um, and so we try to both give enough time for kids to do that, but also understand that like, it's a heavy thing. And uh, so we use it about an hour and a half, two hours that it takes to go through that. Um, and obviously, one of those places we talk to kids like, I always walk in the door expecting that there's survivors or survivors' families uh, in that space. So uh, we're going to conduct ourselves in accordance with that. Um, Smithsonian Museums uh, gives me a little more freedom. Um, so we go to the National Mall and then chaplains kind of did me up and said, okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to aerospace, I'm going to American history, I'm going to science. And then okay, who wants to go to this one? Kids will go in, and as long as they stay with Buddy, they, they kind of work through, and then after 45 minutes, an hour, it's like, okay, where do you guys want to go next? So we try to get them. It is a sampling. Um, it is not a full immersive experience in all the museums. There's no way we can do that in four days. Um, so it's enough that we want kids to be like, hey, that was really cool. I learned something. I saw something. And I want to know more about it where we'll get it back. So that's, uh, that's kind of how we do that. We try to get kids a little bit more. Uh, freedom at that point to, to walk around. We do have PTO provides uh, t shirts for us. We try to find something that's just on the verge of obnoxious color wise, um, so that when we are standing in the mall or you know, we're standing in the museum, we can be like, that's a nice little kid, that's a nice little kid, that's a nice little kid. Uh, you know, because every kid has shorts and that. Kind of so it's like, if you don't have something that just sets it up, it's a little hard. Um, and then dinner cruise, we usually go back to the hotel, um, give everybody a, a chance to uh, freshen up, um, and then we head out for the dinner cruise. Um, it's, it's awesome because it's contained. Um, it's all right there, and everybody is thoroughly exhausted by the time the night is done, uh, but it's, it's a good time there. Um, Thursday, again, breakfast. Um, and then we go, we hit some of the memorials. So Vietnam, World War II, Lincoln, Korean War memorials. Again, we're talking to kids about expectations, talking about the significance of it. Um, talk to, you know, Vietnam Wall and this picture, you know, talking about the controversy of, you know, hey, not everybody likes this, not everybody likes uh, the, the architect who was chosen to design this, like, what's the history? Um, so we, we try to talk about those things. Um, in their social studies class, they will research um, a name that's on the wall um, for somebody from Ohio. Um, they'll learn a little bit about their uh, background, and then they'll create these remembrance cards. And um, then we go and leave. There's a final name on the wall, and then they go and have the remembrance cards uh, about that individual. Um, something that uh, one of our former teachers, Kim Rhodes, um, started. And, um, we're, we're very glad to kind of carry that on. Um, uh, White House and Lafayette Park, um, we did those two things. Again, Lafayette Park, we talk about uh, kind of the significance. Why are these people, you know, uh, monuments? Why are they not? Uh, you know, who's, who's missing? Um, we also talked to them. There is uh, a, uh, a, a, a protest uh, set up uh, against nuclear war. And so it's the longest standing um, protest of its type in this area. And so we talk about, you know, like what does it mean to like, truly dedicate yourself that you're going to sit in this tent for years and years and years knowing that the minute you move, now you've lost your know, big grandfather that you can't come back. Um, so it's all like you can respectfully interact with, with these people and hear the message. But also there's very graphic images of, of the effects of nuclear war so that you can kind of decide. 
So all the places we're just trying to, as much as possible, talk to them about like what's going on here, what's not going on here, who's you know, what are the different viewpoints. Uh, every year it seems like we get another layer of fence put between us and the White House. Um, so I'm assuming at some very point we like just a new binoculars. Uh, but we do get close. Uh, sometimes we want to know what you know, we do a tour of the White House. Uh, we don't. I mean, they want they want everything about every kid, their blood type, their social security number, their 37 closest relatives. Like, there's just no way to get, get through the security for that. Uh, and then uh, Broadway and Center is a food court. Um, so again, we're handing out vouchers and kids have time to, to do that. Um, so Sony museums, again, might get some of those that we didn't get before, National Archives. Uh, and then we'll do dinner at Pentagon City Mall. It, it, it's, it's like Tuttle Mall on steroids. Um, I don't know, it's like four or five floors. Um, there's a food court on the first floor. And so kids have lots of lots of options there. Uh, and then they have some time. Oh, the Apple Store was another highlight from the video. They have time we can walk around and do shopping. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of a relaxation. Um, and again, we kind of like sit. The nice thing about that is you can sit at the top and you can see all the floors all the way down. Uh, uh, and then uh, we hit Jefferson, FDR, Martin Luther King Jr. Memorials, um, and uh, those are really cool at night, so we try to do those at night. Um, then Friday, uh, so we do breakfast, we do room checks, we talk to the kids Thursday night, I and mean, I, I tell the kids, like, some of you guys are going to need about 30 minutes in the morning, everything you put away, packed up. Some of you can't go to sleep tonight because you have so much work to do in your room to have it ready to check out. So we make sure that everything is cleaned up and put away. Um, we're doing that uh, every evening in chaperones. The way our chaperone system works is there's usually four or five kids in the room. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then chaperones will take like three to four rooms will be theirs, and then we go to bus groups. So bus groups will have maybe four chaperones worth of, of groups. So um, every night ch the chaperones are going, they're knocking on the door, they're making sure the kids who are supposed to be in the room are in the room, the kids who aren't supposed to be in the room aren't in the room. Uh, and then we put, uh, we take the tape on the doors um, so that we can see if the door was open. There's night security that walks around. Um, and checks that, um, and then if there's a problem, they come wake me up, and um, I'm like at my least pleasant. Um, I love my sleep, um, and like I love your kids, but after all day on the bus, all day travel, um, I don't be some issue at the high school dealing with remotely. Like the last thing I want to do is be woken up at 2 a.m. for the kids you just want to talk about. So that's not that does not usually go well. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so we make sure everything's cleaned up um, and go from there. And then um, we've been going to the Ubar Hazy uh, Museum, which is a branch of the Air and Space Museum uh, out near Dulles Airport. Uh, the thing that's awesome about it is it has all the big planes. Like when you go in the Air and Space Museum on the mall, they've got like sections of planes, they've got small planes, but they've got like a space shuttle there. You know, it's like some of those things are really cool. We're fortunate with uh, the Air Force Base in Dayton that we can see some of those things, but it's pretty cool. We also been going to, this is the plane of Jerry Mock, who was the first woman to fly solo around the world. Um, originally from Newark, she lived in Bexley at the time that she made that flight. So uh, there's a statue at the, uh, at the uh, Columbus Airport. Uh, they're honoring her, and so much students uh, got to write some essays and, and go to the part of the unveiling of that statue a number of years ago. But uh, so, but last year I was super excited. Didn't wait to show the kids. Uh, you know, we talked about. I'm, I'm excited. I'm not excited there, but I'm super excited. The bridge point out, and uh, I'm not seated up there. It's not this normal kind of corner where it usually is. Um, oh, last month we moved it back to the main place because it would get more attention there. So, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know which which airspace museum we'll hit this year, but um, but we try to make, make, make those local connections, which we're very fortunate to have lots of those. Um, also, people have found out that this used to be the thing. Nobody knew about this other museum. Nobody would go out there. And now, I feel like more and more people are going out there. So, um, just can't have nice things. People don't show up. 
Uh, get, a, get that one last little corral buffet meal in for heavy pound. Um, stop for restroom stop, regardless of how the rolling crowd is. Like we're still going to make that stop. It's scheduled. It's not dependent on anything. Um, and then you can stop the Ohio Valley Mall, uh, grab Subway, grab um, lunches there. If it's if the weather's nice and time to sit out, it used to be easy because the mall was like all but abandoned. And so we just stop there, but like, it's nice now, so I don't think they want us hanging out so much. But um, uh, so if it's nice, we'll find a space in between. Um, if we're right behind time, the weather doesn't permit, we'll just keep the box lunches on the on the bus and keep moving, um, or stop at a rest stop, something like that. Um, about two hours out, uh, so that's right when we cross into back into Ohio. About two hours out, we're on the kids. We're like, call your parents, tell your parents. Two hours will be there, um, and then we get back at about nine o'clock. Um, this, this, and I'm sorry, I recycle jokes, but that's what I got. Like, this is my gift to you, parents. These four days, like, enjoy them. Like, don't like, kids will be fine. We can text them or whatever. That's fine. But, like, enjoy this time. Uh, get other kids at home. Like, nobody told you to do that, but uh, <laughs> and then, so. Uh, but enjoy this time. And your gift to us is your up with your child. Um, again, I'm like, that four-day limit, I'm like, like, just please keep it with your child. Um, <laughs> so we will, we will report to see you and we'll do that. And it will remind you not to park in front of uh, the building on the, on the building side of passing in because they can bring four charter buses in. Um, and the one parent, who I'm sure is not somebody in the street, so like, hey, uh, will be parked there. And we're like, hey, you got to uh, and then, okay, rooms. So, four to five students in a room. Uh, this is absolutely the worst part of the entire trip. Uh, roommate selection process, every year I'm like, we are never going to be see again. Uh, well, it, it's never going to happen. Uh, and then, you know, about five months later, I'm over it. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's the most stressful thing, like, it's a, like, it's, it's just a huge social thing, and I understand. Uh, you know, kids have been like, I'm rooming with this person since you know the day they started kindergarten. You know, they just they were on the same half day entrance with their buddy at Cassidy, and now you know they, they speak across each other. They can be in the DC roommates, and now something's happened, and they're not. It's, it's drama. Um, as part of this, we push it as late as possible. So that we don't have to go through the cycle of friends and not friends and friends and not friends. Uh, just do it one time. Uh, there'll be uh, there'll be a group of six that takes the room together, and we just can't do that. Um, so it's just it's hard. Um, so uh, the way we do this is uh, we tell the kids, we give the kids a heads up, and say this will be the, the day that you can start making your roommate request, and then they come to see. Uh, some me or Mr. Price, uh, and they tell it like as a group, like you can't come tell me so and so because I always get burned. And they're like, I promise they said they were in a room with us, and so and so, like, yeah, I was in a room with them. Um, so like, they have to come to me together as a group. Uh, if they have four or five, and uh, this is a roommate request, we always reserve the right to uh, make an executive decision uh, that we think is in their best interest and ours to do something different. But that's their roommates. Um, and then uh, also we tell them like if you got two or three, like come see us. And then we get all those kind of twos and threes, and then we start like working like hey, these two kids want a room, uh, and these two, you know you guys all kind of get along, so you think, you know like, didn't actually get to talk to each other, but here you go. And then we tell like play arrangement. <laughs> uh, so we work through that. Uh, it's there's there's always and the, this will be the other one being issues. But there's always some issue. Um, okay, we have six in the room. No. Can, we, can I sign the friend up? No. Can I have my own room? No. Um, so uh, we, we just we work through that. Students can only be in their own rooms. I think that's probably obvious why. Um, night security and monitor noise and safety. And then the table of ours. My favorite, I think now that all the kids are gone through, my favorite ever was the girl, I mean, a smart girl, uh, who said, but if there's a fire, how do I get out of the room? Uh, and I'm like, it's a piece of painter's tape. Like, you will be able to, the door opens in. 
and like you will be able to escape. Uh, and we did a fire on you off last year, so that was pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> luckily, it's just burnt piece of toast or something. Um, so we're gonna need your help meeting deadlines and just communication. This is just like an all-encompassing project. So anything you can do to help us, uh, we'll hunt you down. It's just not our preference. Uh, so I think you can get out of it by not communicating too bad. Um, if you, okay, I say this every year, and, and so it, there's online systems for both the African American History Museum and the Holocaust Museum, and I want to say it's six months, eight months, something like that. They say you can log in at this specific time and request your tickets. Every school in the country is trying to do the same thing. So a day's worth of tickets are gone in like a day or something. Uh, so if you have connections, and I mean like you have connections <laughs> to either one of these places, uh, like like you're bringing us in the side of the work, uh, like someone's name is on the building, uh, like let let's talk. Uh, I have I have some of our our, our most famous uh, uh, Columbus people. Uh, I gone through them year after year, and eventually, you know, you can only have something here. So, uh, but if that's something, like, let's talk. Uh, not like Aunt Judy's son works the night shift. Like, unless he let us in during the night shift. Uh, so we can talk about that. Um, so deadlines, the most important thing, I appreciate the money, the most important thing is that we're the pitch. We can't plan for your kid. We don't know if they're going. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I can't say enough times the financial support uh, that's available, the resources. Um, we've never had a kid not be able to go because of financial uh, reasons. So this won't be the year either. 